Hi guys, welcome to our video. I'm Mohamed Amin Tassi. So today, we'll be interviewing high up students about what they think education in the 21st century should look like. I believe that teaching in the 21st century should start by changing the way of lecturing to make it more fun and so that students will be more entertained and more interested in the subject. Teaching in the 21st century shouldn't be students sitting at their desks quietly writing down the tiniest things their teachers said just like robots. It shouldn't be teachers asking kids to get straight A pluses. In the coming years, we have to provide students with an education fully based on teaching soft skills such as teamwork, communication, and collaboration. And of course, including tech strategies is a must. I mean, we're not gonna keep using chalk and uh, blackboards for the rest of our lives. And I can't believe I finally got to say this. I'm dreaming of the day where teachers would stop bombarding their students with tons of homework. Creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. These four skills should be part of every lesson just the same way as literacy and numeracy. I believe that education is, not, is designed to not only uh, empower students statistically and in terms of facts, but most importantly to prepare them for a better future. And by that I mean that uh, the objective of school should switch from trying to teach what to think to actually teach how to think. And we can do so by using a lot of uh, teaching strategies, mainly like uh, flipped learning. And by that we can uh, allow the students to develop both their hard and soft skills and also enable them to think and rely on themselves. To conclude, it seems that our friend shared similar opinions about how should the education in the 21st century look like by mentioning the importance of including high-tech equipments in classes, ensuring entertainment and working on soft skills. Years ago, in schools and workplace, the individual work concept was, and this is still in many societies, a cat and dried value. Yet, in the course of time and due to globalization, people tend to inculcate the teamwork principles within their societies, starting with the schools. So we speak more and more about uh, collaboration, cooperation, teamwork, team project, group project, and also collaborative mindset. But in the very recent years, we have noticed that the world has changed a lot and the requirements are kind of different. So apart from the teamwork, we have to prepare the students to work in a network. You may ask, how does flipped learning help? Let's see the video and let's explore more. To switch from teamwork to network, we can use a variety of materials and resources, including films. So after viewing the film together in class, the students are supposed to complete what we call the OCA, out of class activities, or what we call the individual space activities. Then when they are in class, they are engaged in what we call the group space workshops or the in-class activities. The teamwork activities include Shack Time, that stands for Share, Help, Ask and Comment, Feedback, Fluency, Critical Thinking and Creativity. Shack Time, one of my favorite parts of our class. First of all, what is it? Well, it stands for Share, Help, Ask and Comment. After completing our out-of-class activities, we tend to have this part in our class where we share what we achieved and also the difficulties we face. We also, in groups that we repeatedly change, give our opinions and get to hear what others have to say. We also help each other out, ask questions and comment on pretty much everything. 
While doing this action, we don't realize that it contributes to building our confidence, communication skills, collaboration and critical thinking. We just think of it as a fun in-class workshop, but for real, we do learn a lot of things. At the Vocabulary Feedback Stage, as in its name, we try to recall all the new learned language and that by evaluating one of our classmates' work. We are given a handout of the work and collaboratively we try to correct mistakes if found. It is one great way to review the learned language and fully grasp vocabulary. Honestly, I believe this is a fun and better way of learning. Smart questions. In this stage, we get to ask those open-ended questions that pop up in our minds when we're watching a movie and that we don't usually get to ask in a normal class because often they are overlooked or categorized as not important or time-consuming. But the thing is, these questions are essential. They allow us, us students, to further analyze a certain subject and to come up with these fresh new ideas outside the box as well as it initiates a lot of intriguing discussions and debates. And it's also really great to see how others think of a certain subject. It's interesting to see from what angle they have decided to tackle the question. And for that, I think that it is an activity that really reflects our personality and emotional intelligence. And I think that really boosts our confidence. Critical thinking abilities do not develop on their own. As a part of an extensive reading program, these abilities could be taught and practiced. However, auditory learning should not be overlooked. As a result, the educator should give well-chosen texts and films that cover the same topic but from diverse angles. This will assist students in learning how to pick relevant information, analyzing and evaluating facts, sharing their deductions in a highly reasonable manner, writing persuasive essays based on their attitude. These skills could be inculcated in the following activities. Public speakings, oral presentations, in-class debates, blog and forum talks, video reports, and experts meeting. As for the last stage, my personal favorite. In teams, we students move to a more practical activity where we get to solve all of the problems we encountered in the previous stages. Until this point, we've been only tackling the theoretical side, contemplating, analyzing. But here comes the fun part. We now can finally turn all of this into a, let's say, doable project. Once we're all done working on it, we present it to our fellow classmates. This stage helps exhibit and showcase one's creativity and authenticity. And I'm not gonna lie, it's also pretty fun. I mean, we get to work in teams where we can have fun, laugh, come up with clever ideas together, and maybe even argue sometimes. After completing the different in-class activities, we move to the cap stage. It is a moment we turn the movie moral into real actions. COVID-19 has pushed teachers and students to develop two more skills. How to adopt the SMART goal to convince the audience of the importance of their project and how it can make a change in their society. And also develop their IT skills to share ideas and communicate presentations in a very efficient way. Unfortunately, an unplanned competition surged and it pushed us to redefine the cap stage goals. We've decided to implement the global collaborative mindset that prioritizes the network over the individual or the teamwork, believing that the world will be safer and happier if we all together work for the same goal. If we believe that neither age nor the intellectual competencies can stop us from complementing each other. Hence, instead of having one project, we've made 56 teams 
who completed 56 sub projects and impacted thousands of people. We've called our strategy a network project for all. Now we meet our center's new model concept together, learn, live, and lead. 